Peace family. Um, I'm doing this video as a follow-up to a previous video I just recently did called um, Being a Part of Your Cause. Got some, um, you know, slack for that video from not everybody. Most of my, my listeners and my subscribers pretty much knew what I was talking about. But then there was a few fence riders um, who some of them, well, one of them in particular, I had to block off my channel because he was being disruptive. But I just wanted to follow up on on the person, you know, like that old saying, when you throw a rock into a pile of dogs, the only one that yelps is the one that got hit. Well, apparently I hit this person really hard, uh, you know, and I'm quite sure that they're not alone. They, You know, whenever you get one feedback, it usually represents other people that's not saying anything. So I just wanted to clarify my position by um, reading an article that I had written. And um, I wrote this article, wow, it's been a few years, a few years. I, I would imagine it's been over 10 years ago when I wrote this. And it was an article titled, um, The Special Negro. And actually, you might notice if anybody's been to my site, um, a, a portion of this original article is on my website in terms of in, on my about section. But I just wanted to read this. Um, it's a piece that I wrote years ago called The Special Negro. I'm going to read it verbatim. The Special Negro. You know the type, right? They say things like, I'm not like those other black people are even worse made to feel special by white folks who feel comfortable with them. I've never thought of myself as a special Negro. I believe my talent is breaking down complicated subject matter into something palatable for the masses. I don't think that qualifies me as special. I'm only following in the footsteps of my unofficial mentors El Hodge Malik El Shabazz, Malcolm X, and Amos Wilson. The special Negro doesn't consider themselves part of the culture, but exists like Uatu the Watcher from Marvel Comics, not involved, but merely observing. Odd considering the fact they have a birth certificate, a social security number, Federal Reserve promissory notes in their pocket, or worse yet, digitally assigned credits posing as currency. The special Negro has no overall agenda or point. Their job is to play the devil's advocate to people who have one. Absent an overriding agenda or point, a counterpoint to what anyone is saying is moot. How can you argue against a point if you have no direction or, dis or destination for your argument to go to? It's like I say my name is Mark, and a special Negro says, well, how do you know your name is Mark? I mean, do you really know? Now where the fuck is that point going? Nowhere. This characteristic is attributed mostly to psychology majors who have spent m too much time around Eurocentric constructs. Newsflash. The European takes simple things and makes them complicated because to them complexity equals intelligence. The African takes complicated things and makes them simple because to us simplicity is intelligence. The special Negro believes they operate outside of the box of black culture because they like things most black people don't like, musically and artistically. What they fail to realize is that our culture, our true culture, embraces all excellence, musically and artistically. This doesn't make them special. The reason they feel special is because of the assault on our culture by mainstream white society and the bootlicking Negro sellouts who pimp a sensationalized Hollywood version of our culture to white suburbia in order to make a profit. That dynamic is the African aberration, not their multifaceted outlook and worldview in relationship to music and art. Newsflash. The pretentious word eclectic is actually yet another word for African. Sorry, special Negro. You are not outside of the box, but right smack dab in it. Once the special Negro stops acting like Uatu the Watcher from Marvel Comics, maybe they can get involved in the process of black liberation and empowerment instead of intellectually masturbating and analyzing our collective ass kickings and patting themselves on the back 
and thinking they are deep because they were able to break down and give blow by blow details of it. This white supremacist con well, this white supremacist system has created classes just like they have created so called money. They create the tune and we dance to it. How do we expect to ever move as a people if we have three separate movements lower, lower class, middle class, and upper class? Because we don't see things that unite us, but only the things that separate us. Listen, special Negro, let me let you in on a little secret. The concept of individualism as an absolute is bullshit. I've often heard the special Negro utter, the highest ideal is the individual. Wrong. As per our great elder, Professor Amos N. Wilson, human beings are not born independent, but dependent. We are dependent on our mothers, our fathers, and our community to protect us, raise us, and instill the cultural values of the whole into us. This protection does not come without a price tag. The price tag is that we take the cultural values of the whole and add to it and benefit it. The phrase is often uttered, it takes a village to raise a child. What you do not hear is why it takes a village to raise a child. The reason is because the village has a stake in whether or not the child will be a benefit to the community or a detriment to it. You are not an individual just for yourself. Your individualism and unique way of looking at the world was given to you so that you can incorporate your individuality and perspective into the collective. We cannot all see things the same way. If we all thought the same way, the culture would become stagnant and we wouldn't be able to solve problems. By utilizing your unique individual perspective, you can see things from another point of view and help the collective culture be dynamic and creative. Just my opinion for what it's worth. One. And as a um, backup to what I just read to you, I just want to um, put this out into the atmosphere so that everybody knows exactly where I'm coming from. There's a lot of people who are subscribed to my channel, and I and I have a feeling this guy isn't alone. When you when you start talking about black issues or African centered issues and and anything involving like the culture and stuff like that, um, you get a lot of people in it, and and I can't really give reasons for their motivation. I don't know. I'm just noticing them who really don't like themselves, really don't like black people really don't like the culture, do not identify themselves as African. I mean, they grudgingly admit that we have African lineage, but they don't feel a need to want to reconnect with the lineage that they came from, which is ass backwards and retarded to me. But whatever. Those people um, usually are the ones who get pissed off at me. Now, there are people involved in the African Senate cultural conscious nationalists, for whatever lack of a better term, um, demographic, who I'm not on the same page with in terms of, I would say, strategies and tactics, but I'm on the same page with them in terms of their wanting black folks to have power, either through integrate, well I won't say integrate it, either through utilizing our resources here in America or going to the continent and establishing something new. Now the, to me that's a philosophical argument. It's like it's almost like if, if you have, um, if you look at the founding of this country, you had all of the founders sit down at the table and they all had different viewpoints of what they wanted this country to be or what they wanted their people to what type of system they wanted them to be in but they were all at the table so as long as someone is about a socio-economic and political infrastructure for black folks and African people and they believe in the empowerment of African people and I can be at the table with you and I can sit down with you and we can have a discussion and we can disagree with each other respectfully sometimes you know when it comes to black folks you know African people disagreements always tend to be disrespectful because we, we <laughs> conflict resolution isn't one of our um, strong points you know coming out of the slavery system but 
I can sit down with brothers like Kala. I can sit down with brothers like Scotty Reed. I can sit down with brothers like Kamal. I can sit down with, with anybody who, who is coming to the table um, talking about they want to empower black folks. If you're not quite at the level where I feel you should be, so what? You know, who the fuck am I? You know what I'm saying? But if you at least agree that we should be empowered as a people, then we can sit at the table. But, and this video is specifically for that but, if you are a Negro who is not about black nationhood, black a black social, economic, and political infrastructure, if you are not about that, if you're thinking that we're going to get empowered by merging into invisibility with the dominant white power system, listen, there's a button on my channel. It's a subscribe button. And you can also unsubscribe from there. You need to unsubscribe from my channel bottom line because it's going to be a rough ride for you unsubscribe from my channel and 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 you know I used to ask the question why do people who are not interested in African empowerment and black liberation why do they constantly show their face in black nationalist African Senate cultural conscious forums why if you are an individual get your individual last go there you know get all the um the fiat currency that you want this inflated wealth that makes you feel good about yourself and makes you want to be um, feel like you can step and talk over other people because they don't have the amount of, of fiat currency that you do. If that's what you're about, live your life, man. Merge into invisibility with the, the dominant white structure. Cut this cultural pretension stuff out. You know what I'm saying? Stop being on the outskirts of the culture trying to, you know, get your cultural buzz on on the low. Just be a full-blown Negro. You know, I respect full-blown Negroes. I respect Tiger Woods and the rest of these dudes. They're not about no African centered nothing. They're not trying to reconnect with their past or with the culture. They are Americans. So be an American, unsubscribe from my channel, and make life easy on yourself. Unless you're just in the um, BDSM or something where you just like getting beat up and punished. Because that's exactly what's going to happen on this channel. So, you know, I just want to say peace to all my people. And, um... I just needed to, you know, put that out there as a follow up because it's amazing. I, you know, I think I clarify an issue and it gets more, you know, muddied and cluttered once I put it out there. So I hope that this one does, you know, eliminates all the confusion about where I'm coming from in relationship to this thing. So peace.